Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. Now today's video is going to be my November TBR. So I'm just going to get straight into this video. So let's get started. So the first book I kind of want to mention and I'm not going to put it in my TBR because I've just finished it. But that is Trap Lines by Eden Robinson. Now basically this is going to be an in-betweeny book because I've just given you my October wrap up and this was not in it but I did in between the October wrap up and the November TBR read this one but I'm going to do an individual book review of this so I'm not going to give too much away I'm just going to let you know I really really enjoyed this book so please look out for the book review because this is going to be glowing glowing so I'm going to put this one down now now I've pitched it to you so it's not got lost in the abyss so now I'm going to go on to the books I'm going to read in November. Now as you'll notice a lot of these were from the Canadian Appreciation Book Month that I didn't get round to reading so sorry about that but they're not going to be in a specialist Canadian Appreciation Month this month and I'm also not going to do non-fiction November. I know loads of booktubers are doing that and I'm gutted because I didn't know it was a thing and now it's a thing and I'm too far behind and I've got so much fiction in my house that I need to get through. I'm really sorry I'm not going to be on that hype but um, I will try to get on bookish hypes as I get more under control of what's going on in the booktube world. Um, I really want to do a cosy reading night. I've been saying this for months um, since I started booktube that I wanted to be on the cosy reading night which is Lauren in the Books cosy reading night which I'll link down below which she does a couple of times a year um, and I missed the last one because my head was basically up my ass and I had other things going on so I will make sure I'm involved in tags and TBRs and readathons from now on but no I'm not going to be in that one because I didn't know it was a thing and now it is so that's that so I'm just going to get onto the books now so the first book I'm hoping to read this month is Alias Grace or Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. Now it's Chunky Monkey. I told you last time I really want to read it because there's a series being made in America or Canada or both maybe. It's going to get streamed to both places um, of this. Um, I know it's about an Irish woman falsely accused of murder. I don't really know much else. It is very very chunky so I feel like a lot's going to go on but I really need a next Atwood fix because I love The Handmaid's Tale a lot. And I think this is going to be really good, but I've got nothing more that I know about it. So there's that one. And then the next one is one I started to re try and read last night. And I just felt too tired, um, so I put that off. And that is Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. Now this is a Canadian classic. Also a lot of people in Britain love this. Um, I know it's about... I know from reading the blurb last night that these two... This couple man and a woman are looking for a stable hand a stable boy and they get given this girl instead and then they decide to keep her even though it's not practical for their I guess they live on a farm maybe I know a lot of Canadian um, landscapes and wilderness is discussed in this book a lot of people love this character because she is charming and interesting and I know that she gets herself into a lot of scrapes it's a classic children's literature kind of book where the child goes on adventure coming of age and I'm really interested to read this because I think it will be quite refreshing in terms of some of the other more intense books that are going to be or attempted to be read this month. So yeah I think it's going to be a real easy read. Um, I didn't expect it to be quite so long and as I checked last night I just want to show you oh past the introduction there's quite a lot of chapters it goes on for two almost two full pages worth of chapters so I hope that the chapters are quite small because it seems like quite a lot of a chunker to get through but I'm excited to read it it's one of those classics that I wanted to get off the bucket list so there we are and then the next one is Rohinton Mysteries of Fine Balance and I've talked a lot about this it's been in a lot of TBRs and just not got around to reading and I think its size is purely what's intimidating me the content's going to be very intense as I've told you it's set in the mid 70s in India it's about the when the government declares a state of internal emergency, sterilisation. Um, so it's going to be really, really intense. I think it's about a son and a father figure. They endure enforced sterilisation. And 
it's not great you know they don't need it it's not necessary and it's going to be harrowing but i will try and get to it this month it's just there's a lot of chunkers that are going to be in this particular book haul which put me off massively but i've tried to include a couple of smaller books so that i'm not drowned in chunky monkey books and so this next one is three day road by joseph boyden mentioned it in another book haul it's set in the war period i think it is 1919 um and it's about from a canadian perspective susan hill says here you won't find anything better than this so that's a great review um i know it's really quite intense i believe i don't really know that much about it again it's another chunky monkey that's that's terrifying me a little bit but i mean i'm going with the cover it's about war hardships canadian winter there you go i'm gonna read it and then i'll tell you more when i actually figure out what it's about so there you go and then the next one the stone angel by margaret lawrence again these are all <laughs> familiar to you guys now if you've been watching any of my tbrs recently um because these have leaked on um but this one's meant to be about aging um hagar shipley she's now over 90 and approaching death she reflects on her childhood marriage, her two sons, the harshness of farm life on the prairie, her failures. Um, I think this is going to be really interesting because I like the idea of reflecting on your life and how as you get older and death becomes more imminent, how people are very reflective, self-reflective. So I think this is going to be really interesting. I don't know more than that. This thankfully is not a chunky monkey, so I think that this would be quite an easy one to get through. I think strategically this month I'm going to try and attack a chunky monkey first because um, I keep trying to go for the really like small books thinking yeah then I can get them under my belt but then it just leaves this really scary pile of chunky monkey books that I'm just not ready to be a part of so maybe I could read that one later in the month even though in my mind now I'm thinking should I just read that one now no Beth you shouldn't because those chunky monkeys are not going to go away so there's that and then the next one is Alice Munro's Dear Life now earlier in the month I did try to read this and it sounds awful but because there's a mixture of really intense books that I read last month as well this seemed a little bit dull at the beginning to get into um so I don't know whether this might be coupled better with a book like Anne of Green Gables where they're both similar as in the beginning is easy to get into Whereas opposed to some of these other books, like um, A Fine Balance will be very intense from the beginning. Um, and The Stone Angel, I presume, will be quite intense. So this one is a collection of short stories. Um, I don't really know much about that. Else about that, I just thought they might be autumnal in theme because of the cover. I know that she's highly acclaimed. And most people say that this is her best piece of work. I don't really know anything about her, I'm going into it blind, but I'll let you know how this goes. So there's that one. And then finally, that's all the Canadian books out of the way. So now I can start talking to you about new books, how exciting. So the first one of which is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. Now I came across this by accident in my sister's room. I was looking for things and I thought, I've never heard of this in my life. Um, but it seems fascinating. I'll read you the blurb. So no matter what he does or the decisions he makes, every time Harry dies he always returns to where he began, a child with all the knowledge of a life lived a dozen times before. Nothing ever changes until now. As Harry nears the end of his eleventh life, a little girl appears at his bedside. I, I nearly missed you, Dr August, she says. I need to send a message. This is the story of what Harry does next and what he did before and how he tries to save a past he cannot change and a future he cannot allow. So I read the blurb of this looking through my sister's room trying to probably steal a makeup or a clothes at some point and I found this and I read the back of it and thought wow that sounds really really interesting. Now I don't remember whether there was a hype for this book I don't know how long it's been sitting in my sister's cupboard for I cannot tell you. But I thought I will drag it out of that cupboard and I'll give it a read because it sounds fascinating. Um, it seems like um, it says here the book club Radio 2 gave it a little badge there. Um, 
and the Guardian and things like that gave it good review so I really want to check this out and see if it's very, any good but if any of you have read it or you know about this book please comment down below with what you think of it because this was a freshie and a newbie in my mind don't know much about it and I'm quite excited for it so if you've read it and loved it just please let me know so we can get excited together so there's that one and then the next one I have for you is one I'm so embarrassed that I haven't read yet and that is Sebastian Barry's Days Without End now this got hidden somewhere as I was moving all my books back into my room it went into this massive box and the other day I woke up in the middle of the night with this fright saying I know I have Sebastian Barry somewhere and I really want to read it because I recently listened to a podcast it's the Guardian podcast and it was about the secret scripture by Sebastian Barry and it was really interesting he's a fascinating character and I really enjoyed the podcast but then I thought no, this is his big exciting work and and this recently went around booktube um, and like a bow of hell everyone was talking about it so I wanted to join and I know I've completely missed the hype now um, because it won the book of the year 2016 for Costa and if any of you watch Simon's channel over at Savage Reads he is currently producing the shortlist for the 2017 Costa book prize so I'm way behind almost a year um, but I really really want to read it everybody said it's fantastic love love loved it I really love the podcast with him discussing the secret scripture really want to read it really should read it really short I'll read it so that's that and then the final book I want to discuss again going on to my podcast theme now I mentioned in my October favourites the banging book club that has Lucy Moon Hannah Witten and Lena Norms in it and they were discussing books and one book that they discussed and it also got brought up in what page you on with Bethany Rutter and Alice Slater and that is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Now they both were talking about the film adaptation and I'm really excited because I really want to watch that but um, in the Banging Book Club if you don't want any spoilers for this they did kind of dissect the book but I kind of like that because they told me everything about this and it sounded like a book that I would be fascinated with. It's based in 1970s Michigan suburbia with these interesting group of sisters, um, how they live in poverty, their family don't care and I, d I really don't want to spoil anything. So um, things happen, drama happens, it's really dark, it's fucked up, boys are obsessed with them even into their adult lives and so it's a reflection of these group of boys who were obsessed with them at the time reflecting back on their obsession and their still emerging obsession but it's just going to be crazy as shit and I'm so 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 excited um, because it's, it's just going to get wild it's going to be a wild time and I'm so 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 excited to read this um, but I don't want to give anything more away because I think after I've heard this podcast I'm kind of, I don't mind having the spoilers because then it's reinforced for me that I should read this book but I know for some people it might put them off or just then make them question why they ever need to read the book so if you don't want any spoilers don't check out those podcasts on this book but if you don't mind spoilers you want to really know if it's something you'll like if you're interested in darker books but you think I don't really know what it's actually about then go check it out because they have glowing reviews of it um, and I feel like this was meant to be because in Canada I came across this book in a secondhand bookshop and it had a different cover, it had this really nice retro cover that had um, girls on the grass with daisies it made it actually look quite optimistic of a book but it's not um, and I put it down and I ended up picking the sell the sell out by um, something Beatty, I forgot his name now I have reviewed it somewhere, it's somewhere along my uh, booktube history and when I look back now after hearing this podcast and the fact that the sellout I didn't have glowing things to say about it I was like wow we were so close to finding each other and then we put it off and then after I heard that podcast I thought no we 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 are meant to meet again and so the other day I had to go get some gifts from Waterstones for Christmas for family and I came across this and said no now is the time so I bought it as a treat for myself and I'm so excited to read it. it's my most hyped anticipated book this month so if you loved it also just leave me a comment down below how much you loved it let's get excited about it um, I'm kind of nervous that because I'm so hyped it might not be what I want it to be and I just wanted to know how you guys feel do you ever 
get excited for a book and are left disappointed? Do you ever get excited for a book and have a satisfaction when you enjoy it? Uh, personally, I'm the kind of person that doesn't get overly excited about books because I like the surprise of having a book that I haven't got hyped about, haven't done too much research, read it and it's phenomenal and then I get obsessed with the author for about three months after. Um, but I wanted to know how you feel about this whole debate about should we get hyped for books? Does that ruin our experience of books? Or sometimes is it justified? Um, because I know a lot of booktubers talk about this five star TBR um, prediction. I predict this is going to be my five star read. And then how sometimes they're disappointed and sometimes they're not. But I find it very difficult to know if I'm, I'm going to give a book five star because for me, between four, four point five, four point eight, which is my invisible rating that I've given to a lot of books, I made that up, I think. Um, but I give a lot of books four point eight. And then my five, they're all very closely knit to me. So I love a four star book sometimes in my mind I'll remember it as much as a five star and I find it really difficult me personally to to know what score to actually give a book based on reflection and reading experience and any issues I had with the book in terms of plot structure writing whatever so I find it very difficult to know if I'm going to have a five star experience but I just wanted to know do you think predicting whether you're going to like it or not dampens your experience of it whether you should just go in blind, not know whether you're going to love it or not and just take it for what it is. So basically, uh, how do you feel about that? What, what Do you think that these booktubers have got it down? Do you think they're just letting themselves in for disappointment? Meh. So that was a bit long-winded but that's everything for my November TBR. Let me know down below what books you're excited for me to read. Um, let me know what books you're reading this month. Um, and I'll see you very soon for another booktube video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.